what is average? This is part three of three videos on in lesson 2.9. In lesson, in the first part of the three part series, we defined the mean, median, and mode. In the second part, we saw some examples of um, mean, median, and mode and the times in which different measures of central tendency are useful. In this part, we uh, take a closer look at the weighted mean and times when you would use this weighted mean. So what is it and when would you use it? The objective is how the statistic weighted mean provides a different snapshot of data. So suppose researchers at a two, small two-year college surveyed students who have credit cards and report the following. The mean credit card debt of $350 for 114 freshmen surveyed and a mean credit card debt for of $285 for 220 sophomores surveyed. What is the overall mean? So I'd like to know what is the mean of these means, sort of. What do you think? I'll give you a hint. The answer is not the average of these two numbers. I think that would be a natural first guess is to take 350 and 285 and just find the average of the two. That would be 317.5. But because there's more sophomores than freshmen, then really uh, the 285 should be counted more heavily than the 350. So this is a time when you would use a weighted mean. Now, again, because there's more sophomores than freshmen, I would expect the weighted mean to be something um, closer to 285 than it is to 350. Maybe something like 300. I don't know. That's just a guess. So let's see how you would do that with a weighted mean. Now, like the name implies, there's always something called weights. Okay. So the weights in this case are going to be the number of freshmen and the number of sophomores. And the way we compute the weighted mean is we take each number times its weight and add them up. And what we divide by is the sum of the weights. In this case, there's $350 for the 114 freshmen. We multiply those two to get a large number. Um, there's $285 was the average for the 220 sophomores, and you multiply those to get another large number. Add those up, and that's 102,600. Um, between the freshmen and sophomores, there's a total of 334 students. The quotient is 307.19. So the weighted mean is 307.19. My guess was 300. It was a little higher than that. But nonetheless, uh, like I had predicted, it's closer. The weighted mean is closer to the 285 than it is to the 350. So in this example, suppose a history course has a midterm, a final exam, and a 20-page report. And the syllabus states they have they have the, these weights determining the final course grade. That is to say, the midterm midterm counts as 20% of the final grade, the final exam counts for 45% of the final grade, and the report counts for 35% of the final grade. Now, if Kim, Kim's grades in the course were 82, 89, and 93, what is Kim's overall grade? How would you do it? What is her overall grade? Well, it's not going to be 82 plus 89 plus 93 divided by 3. That would be the mean of those three numbers, but um, but here the each of those numbers is weighed differently. We're going to take the 82 times its weight, the 89 times its weight, and the 93 times its weight. But um, what are the weights? The weights in this case are the percentages. We're going to take those percentages and regard them as decimals. So you can see that if you take the 82 times 0.2, the 89 times 0.45, and the 93 times 0.35, that is to say, multiply each of her grades by their weights, and then divide by the sum of the weights, you get 89. So Kim's overall grade is 89. And so that 9, you can see that the fact that she had a, that her final grade was weighing it more than the midterm and the report as it should. One final example. 
The college GPA is a weighted mean as well. The grade earned in each class needs to be weighed by the number of credits for the class. So compute the GPA for a student who has earned the following credits. In English 101, which is a five credit course, they got a grade of 3.0. But in Math 96, which is a seven credit course, they got a grade of a 3.2. Public speaking as a five credit course, and they got a grade of a 3.6. And as you look at each of these five courses, you can see that because different courses have different numbers of credits, the, each of those um, grade, point average, grade points should be weighed differently. Since there's a lot of numbers working here, I'm going to do this in two steps. I'm going to first find the, um, the, the grade point multiplied by the weight, which in this case the weights are the credits, and then we'll see if we can compute the number. But before I do, why don't you give it a shot? Pause the video and see if you can find the final GPA and see if your number matches the number I came up with. Did you pause? What did you find? You can see that um, a weight of 5 for the English class, if you multiply that by the 3.0, gives you a 15. Likewise, 3.2 times 7, so 22.4, and do the same with all five classes. If you add them up and then divide by the sum of the weights, then we get 3.212. So 3.212 would be the weighted um, mean of, the, of your college GPA in this case.